YouTube says I'm live again. I believe it. We're here to make cyanotypes again. I named this episode in advance of the episode so that I would have a set of parameters. Otherwise, I might jump around. So the episode is cyanotype quick exposure cyanotypes. That could mean a lot of things. In our case, it means a cyanotype that takes place over a few minutes as opposed to a few hours. And a few, well, I can't define a few because everyone has their own definition. But any definition you have for the word a few or the term few, it is correct. We're looking at our cyanotype paper right now, actually. This is paper that I made earlier today. Some of it's from yesterday, and some of it's even from two days ago. That one is from two days ago. We made that live. Cyanotypes live. The, the only problem I can see with the word cyanotypes live is that if you don't know this is a live stream, it kind of looks like cyanotypes live, and that's a little ominous. We're going to work with a couple of these different types of pages today. These are going to be our finished cyanotype pages, meaning we're going to do contact printing onto these. They already have a nice white border, so they're ideal for contact printing, because when we're done, we have a framed object. Well, the shadow of a framed object. And we've got these hexagon shapes. I cut these up earlier today because they're what I've been envisioning. Every time I've been using the pattern blocks, I've been wishing they were larger. Let me give you a size comparison. We're showing the pattern blocks versus that cardboard pattern block. I had the blocks in a different room because I was anticipating being in that room. That didn't work out, and I'm in this room. And none of that matters because you didn't see where this or that is. Let's see how many... Let's look at this shape in particular. Let's get these out of here for now. How many times bigger is this than that? Because otherwise they look pretty comparable. In fact, let's zoom in. Let's use all the power of our light gathering camera. And let's move him, there we go. Okay. I'd say this is like three times bigger. And we can measure that in a couple different ways. I'm going to estimate it. We're probably not going to get an actual mathematical answer to this because I don't know how to estimate things well enough in terms of mathematical volumes and sizes and such. So we're not going to worry about that. I guess we'd be working with area, not volume. Not in this case, anyway. Because area involves two dimensions of measurement of a shape, and I believe volume involves a third. I'm just naturally filling this in with the uh, rhombus shapes because I'm actually going to show you how I made these cardboard shapes in the first place. I could have called this block arranging live. And I have a feeling I would have attracted just as many interested parties. And I think that's a nice, good thing. As long as someone is earnestly tuning in to find out more. That's how we learn. At the very least, that's how we accept and start to broaden. Okay, so this is what I did. Except I didn't do it on just obviously nothing. I built it on cardboard, traced it, and then cut it out. And then I did it 
I had a template, which I then used and traced and cut out more. And then more. And these are all handmade, which means they actually need to fit in a way that's unique to the way I cut and drew them, which means they'll never fit the same way I made them. So we've introduced a new level of variability into our work. Let's call variability authenticity today. We're gonna make authentic as heck cyanotypes. This one will be our fun little template. Okay, how about this? What's this? This is a cyanotype that I made yesterday afternoon when the light was pretty strong. It represents a camera in the camera's instant film cartridge. Sorry, instamatic film cartridge. That was a capital I because Instamatic is a proper brand name from Kodak. So I made this yesterday when the light was going just right into the, the area I am in right now, actually. It took about an hour altogether to get this side and catch it on the flip side. This was an hour and a half, maybe. No, 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 no. This was an hour altogether of exposure. So I would expose one side and then I would flip the camera and the paper back over, try to find a new alignment. Sometimes I would need to turn it upside down and kind of balance it. Same for the cartridge. Let it, let the sun wash over it again. And then when it's all done, we washed it. And that's what we got. That's a life-size representation of this camera, roughly. I'm here all actually. Which brings up a cool thing about cyanotypes that when you work with cyanotypes and objects, you're, you're creating what's called a, a photogram. A photogram is just any object placed on a piece of light sensitive paper, and then you know remove the object and develop the photo. That's a photogram. I, I would love to break down what the word means, but I'm not gonna get it right. I'm gonna get another photogram out of the sun and bring it in for us to wash and watch. All of these sounds are fine. Unless you had to go to the bathroom and that water was too much. I'm pouring some water. We'll, we'll see what we can do to reuse it several times before, before we have to dump it out. I like, I'm gonna put the water here and then we're gonna talk for a second about it. Let's move our, our cardboard from the path of stray water. There we go. And let's widen back out. That's too wide. That's just right. Okay. This right here is called a contact printing frame. The frame. Inside is a cyanotype that we made yesterday. Underneath that cyanotype is a piece of unexposed cyanotype paper, or at least it was unexposed when I put this out in the sun yesterday. And then underneath that is another piece of white paper, just to make sure it's a nice little thick sandwich of all pressed together goodness. I'm gonna remove this blue cyanotype. We're gonna see what the, the unexposed cyanotype looks like. Rather, I'm sorry, the exposed but undeveloped cyanotype. Now let's be careful to hold this frame because this is just a piece of glass. It fits in the frame perfectly, but it's just a piece of glass. So it's easy to inadvertently leave it somewhere and just see, oh, it fell right through. So I don't do that anymore. 
because this frame is almost 100 years old, is my estimation. And it doesn't act a day over 20. Actually, it acts more like 40. It's very, it's reasonable and it knows how to, to operate itself by now. It's a healthy 40. I'm gonna close this back up. We may make contact prints later. In fact, yes, we will make, we will make contact prints later. And then maybe I'll also show you the trick to always connecting with your camera through the reflections. Just gotta look for the most reasonable path to find the camera lens. Like right now I'm looking at the reflection of the camera in the water. And I think I'm kind of just, well, yeah, that's, that's me. Hey. We made this cyanotype yesterday. It's a whisk, it's a cheese grater, it's a cheese grater, and it's cinnamon. On the other side, it's blocks. It's this block a couple times, it's this block a couple times, in better precision, precision than you are seeing here. And it's also got some cinnamon. All right, that's what it looked like after about, I'd say six hours of leaving it in direct sunlight with this just kind of pressed like that. And then I gave it another, you know, flipped around the paper, which also had an unexposed cyan type on the other side. And we made the same cyano sandwich again, exposed it to strong sunlight. Now we have two sides exposed roughly on top of each other. Let's see how they look when we develop them. we get is a composite image. We have both images overlaid through each other onto one single side of this cyanotype. So we have this image, you can clearly see the whisk. There it is. We can see this cheese grater right here. It only appears on certain sections and it only appears darkly in other sections here. Otherwise it's pretty faint. And we see the cheese grater here, right there little bits of it. You can tell by those little dots, those little wings, they appear right here. And the cinnamon, the little, those appear as kind of intermittent flakes. I'm not, this is probably pizza crust. So that's all right. We'll dab that. We have a piece of dab paper for our wet fingers. That's fine. Let's turn this page around. I don't know if the other side will be darker. It's much lighter. The reason it's much lighter is I was running an experiment. The first exposure, I showed you I made an exposure sandwich where I would put an exposed cyanotype. And then I would take the unexposed paper, there we go. And then I would put it in the contact printing frame and then leave it in the sun. I found that some papers leave a little too much of their, their texture transmitted through them in the final cyanotype. So this side of this cyanotype, I did a different thing in my contact print. Instead of the traditional way I just showed you, it was all the same things. I literally did what you see here. Unexposed sheet, two-sided cyanotype face down. This was to face you know, out to the sun. I added a, a separate piece of white paper over this. My thought was that it would diffuse and just kind of pre-break up the light. So I wouldn't be getting straight light onto the page anymore, which would prevent it from showing all the different differences in thickness of this, this paper. And maybe that worked. <laughs> I don't know. I'm happy with two sides and one of them being darker than the other because again, it's about contrast. I wouldn't be able to appreciate how dark this side is 
unless I could see what the other side was like, and I'd be like, oh, there's not much here. So when you got a two-sided cyanotype, it's a very good thing if you're an optimist, because one side is always going to be a better side no matter what. Most things are better if you're an optimist. And there's nothing paradoxical about that. We're going to do some more cyanotypes. We've made a lot of cyanotype paper. These are all one-sided pages, with the exception of maybe one or two. So these are going to be cyanotypes we make and develop, and maybe we even contact print on the same day, you know, the same stream. We'll find out. We'll see what the universe allows, and I will be opening these drapes here. There's blinds, sorry. Let me open it real wide. I've got these vertical blinds, and they can let a lot of light in. Well, you'll notice I still haven't got a, a real shadow here. I'm not, even, I'm not a vampire. It's just the light is diffused. It's all just wrapping around me right now. So in about another 15 or so minutes, it's going to come straight in through the window right over there. And then we can just start moving our operation into some direct sunlight. For now, let's set up a uh, cyanotype right here using these blocks that I almost set on. I mentioned we're going to reuse this water, which kind of incentivizes us to make a cyanotype sooner rather than later. But the longer it's in that water, the more it's going to start to just develop everything it can. I mean, it's it will, to a certain point, not do any more work, and then the, the fact that I have hard water will just start to eat it away. I'm not being pessimistic, it's just the reality of our situation here. We can watch it happen, perhaps in the playback. Let's put down our first experiment du jour. That is, I believe, French for experiment of the day. And you know, the thing is with cyanotypes, it's easy to start building one. And then when you go to, to unleash it, you're like, oh, I, the lights I need is going to be over there. And I built it here. That's not our problem right now. We know we're going to be building this cyanotype in indirect sunlight. So it's fine where it is. We're going to build a few more even. We're even going to put this down. And I'm leaving this in this little gap in between them again, because all these are not going to mesh perfectly. I might as well just take advantage of that fact and, and create some nice natural patterns that otherwise would be you know, the computer could randomly generate what I'm doing, but it couldn't randomly generate it as randomly as I think I'm intentionally doing things. That stays the way it is. Because this doesn't fit there without bumping into anything. Let's build another cyanotype. We have the means, we have the tools. Let's let's build a, a micro a macro and a micro cyanotype and maybe they can both have the same same kind of concept where it's just a big yeah here we go we'll orient the paper the same way there we go do it like this okay let's start in the same fashion where we got a a cube does that look like it's right now it's not quite the center i love having this overhead camera it's a nice kind of ambivalent point of view to center my framing on. I think that looks about right. He said to himself and the audience members. And I'm going to keep these two blocks touching. Boom. Because if you'll notice this cyanotype, these two are touching. That's a single piece. The other ones all are um, single pieces as well. <laughs> this is a single piece that seems to represent two of our individual pieces. So I'm not giving them a gap that is prominent. Let's do the same thing.
Well, that's that's all there is to that one too. These are going to look interesting together. This one can just here. This makes the most sense, actually, right? Makes so much the most sense. I have an x-ray vision. Block x-ray vision. You know what? I like this. This was a cyanotype sheet that was coated with a frame around it and then no coating and then more. So this could be two separate things if you, you know, kind of pre-fold it. Let's do this. We're going to pre-fold this and then let's expose it. And then we can then later expose the frame once we know what we've exposed on this. Because when you frame something, here's the concept behind framing that someone explained to me once, whose opinion I trust on things of art. When you frame something, the frame should be ornate if the content is basic. And these are just guidelines, so should can be taken with a grain of salt. So if we just have a single object here as our subject for this cyanotype, then our frame, oh, that'll be cool. Our frame should be maybe some nice plants, maybe something vinular with vines on it and leaves. Uh, vinular is not a word yet. We'll see if anyone takes it after this and runs with it. Okay, let's build something on this. I like that, that's like, a, that's like an improv concept. Okay. I like this camera, I think it's really cool. Let us put it here for now. There we are. Let's build another cyanotype using this. No, these seats will save for a later date because they can be used for printing things onto. There are there are final sheets. Let's put another one of these down and right there and put another one of these cubes, which is actually a hexagon that I'm using my imagination for to call it a cube. And let's keep everything in line because I think that looks nice and it helps me keep a sense of what concepts are we working with. And I like having a direction on these. So I like continuing to just kind of add something that's there pre going on. In fact, let's add more. Let's add more things going on. We'll add some depth, but we don't want to add additional weird shadows. So let's do this. This one just keeps going. Oh, wonderful. This one won't even, this will end on the page, which is a nice thing. I like it when cyanotypes don't end up exceeding the boundaries of their page. If they don't, if there's no reason to, I kind of like when there's boundaries because it helps someone looking at it define an object instead of some abstraction entering. For example, this could be right now, I don't know. Let me move it so we can look at it better. No, let me. Let me adjust the camera so we can look at it better. We have the technology. Why now? Look at our fun kit here. Okay. So, camera's already exposing. Let's turn it already. Just for fun. This could be many things. I don't know. Right now, I see maybe it's because there's a color in it, I'm already inferring something into it. I see kind of a, a hand holding maybe uh, maybe their fist up, like, yeah, this is great. Or, I don't know. You know what? It'll, it'll take a few more cubes for me to define it. But now let's, let's mesh it up with this and really have some fun. There we go. Maybe we'll just leave these here. Yeah, we will leave these here. And we'll just keep building on this. And we'll see what the shade has done to it, and then we'll hit it with some sun. I think there'll be some sunlight coming soonish. How about this goes in this direction? So we kind of have this, boom. Now we have this, we can have it going, boom. 
my direction sound effects may or may not be truly communicating direction, but I think they're useful. At the very least, they're onomatopoeic. And we're actually going to hit these. This is shade right now. At the moment, there really isn't anything to share, you know, in terms of look at these cyanotypes being made because there's just no light coming in. I've blocked it. But we're going to open it up right now. And we're going to see what happens. Notice the color. Oh, you know what I should do is move all the unexposed cyanotype paper that I don't want to be exposed yet. This should go somewhere. Maybe under the contact printing frame. Very satisfactory storage. Now let's open this baby up. All right. Now we're cyanotyping. I want to move this. I want to keep moving it. Just because I have a, I don't have a plan, but I know that there's something we can do with this that requires just the extra touch of attention before we let it just go. Same for this. I like these, these lines that we've set up to be somewhat useful. So I'm going to just get these going. There's perfections, there's imperfections, and I have a specific ratio of which I like to achieve. About one of these. And then how about this? Is this going to hit below the perforated line? Yes, it is. Cool. We are now cyanotyping live. Do any of these need cinnamon is a question you may start to ask yourself when you make a lot of cyanotypes. Why would you ask this question of yourself? Cinnamon, if you apply it at the right time, will block every bit of light from hitting the paper. Even direct sunlight is blocked by cinnamon. Cinnamon is essentially tree bark, and apparently tree bark can handle a lot of photons. So, going to the pantry right now to grab some cinnamon. My mom will tell you I used to pronounce cinnamon as, or maybe this is a, someone else's life I've mixed up with my own. Cinnamon. You know what? It's hard to know sometimes. Cinnamon. Very useful for cyanotypes. We're not going to apply it to this one. We will apply it to this one because I love what it does to hexagon rhombus shaped cyanotypes. It gives them this kind of otherworldly, spacely effect. And it smells lovely. Let's put him up in the, the, the top here. Your top camera. He knows it. Is there space on there for this? Yeah, let's take the cube off. Go wide, see what's up. Yeah. So there's a difference in light. This is, this light's happening a little sooner. And it's a little brighter. Maybe not actually, I can't stay. I can't back that up. I am gonna put this flash cube, this unexposed flash cube right here. That's where I would go if it didn't need this adapter. But then the adapter means it won't fit on our cyanotype sheet. So I, I don't think we need the adapter to be fully com complete in this experience. We're going to transfer this cyanotype because we have the technology in the form of a tray. Trader. 
It's a metal tray. I got it at the uh, Salvation Army in San Diego about a year and a half ago, two years ago. At the time, it was $3. I bought it. I was thinking, man, am I ever going to use this? Is $3 worth it? I bought this years ago. I use it almost every day when I do cyanotypes. It was worth it. It was worth every cent. And I'm moving this cyanotype because I, I want both of these to have some time in the sun. They deserve it. So we can actually put this here for now. Strange as it may seem. It's still getting, even down there, plenty of indirect sunlight, enough to float its, its boat, cyanographically speaking. You can see the difference between, let's zoom in here. Right there is where the paper we just took off and moved over is, that's what's covering up. That's the new exposure it's had in the shade since we've started. And for a more obvious representation, I will do this. I hope that wasn't too shocking. Let's take this cyanotype sheet and move it, keeping it all still arranged the way it is. And if it's, you know, jostled, we'll fix it. There we go. They look happy to me. This has not gotten any of the exposure yet because we just, we had it covered up with this paper the entire time. But now we have a chance to add something to it. Let us leave it. Let this be a happy macro and microcosm of each other. I'm gonna take our, our up here camera cyanotype and I'm gonna turn it. Let's go like that. Should still stay on there. No, it's not gonna stay on there at all. If I do that, it will. And it's okay if it blocks some of that. Except that there's totally a side I'm trying to protect on there. How about this? That should work. Now it's happy. It's okay. No one will know we we had to bend our paper truth a little bit to make it fit. This is a common a common issue in creating anything is that. You're already lying. No matter what you do, the thing was what it was. So either your imagination is what you had and changing it into a representation is changing your imagination. Or in this case, the cyanotype is just a shadow of this object. And it's not even a usually dimensional shadow. It's flat. So it requires some... Some brain juice when you look at a cyanotype, and I think that's what makes them engaging. Here's that cyanotype from yesterday with the whisk. Maybe that has different names in different places, that, that tool. It was a wire tool, tiny wire wrapped around a handle. I call it a whisk. Use it to aerate, you know, any number of baked goods, eggy baked goods. Here's that cyanotype of this exact camera right here. Wow. So looking pretty good. Let's see, this still has some catching up to do. I see the. There's still some darkness here that this has a lightness to it. These haven't caught up essentially, which means there's not much exposure coming in if this isn't changing. That's what that means. Which means we have time to put another cyanotype down. And luckily all our materials and toys are at hand, so that's easy. What do we have? Hmm. 
we have binoculars. And I like when a cyanotype has an object on it that displays kind of an angular shadow. Like, you know, not, not always straight. You can see right now, this shadow is casting kind of a straight shadow. And I'd be more interested if it was kind of like, like that, there we go. Now it's got some depth and we can even do this. Let's make this work for our existing cyanotype and say we want to cover up those two little bits of this one. And now we've done it masterfully, leaving us some space here to make another cyanotype with blocks. Why do we make cyanotypes with blocks? Because we have blocks. They're right next to us. So, of course. Huh. We even have block blocks. Look at that. Let's put some block blocks down. In fact, we have lots of block blocks. I'm not going to spill anything with any intent, but I do want to have the colors facing up for visually pleasing images. And you know what we're doing? As soon as we put stuff on the paper, we're creating a narrative. I've just created any number of things on this paper because we've created something to look at. By adding blocks to a previously empty environment, there's now inherently a subject. So what do we do? I guess we take this skeleton because every uh, cyanotype of fun enjoyability has a skeleton in it. Let's put some more blocks down as well. And we're putting blocks down because I think they look neat. We can always take them out after we're set up with our skeleton friend. I like doing things on cyanotypes in steps, especially if there's already light coming in. It's nice to have different, you know, this had a chance to expose all the, the blocks I put down. This paper was exposing the entire time. So these two might have a different color of lightness as a result of that time difference. So that'll just add more depth and dimension, and maybe visual interest to our end result. I'm looking through all these skeleton bones here. Just trying to find ones that are going to represent something good. Which way is our skeleton going? He doesn't even know. That's okay. But he's happy. He's so glad. He's like, yeah, I am free. Look how happy he is. I don't have a complete skeleton model anymore that I can reference to see which bones go where. That's on, that's on me. But that's okay. Looks like I kept one of his arms intact. Oh, he's the happiest. He has feet. Which way do they go? I uh, don't know. But there's a step. We just changed something. We have affected the narrative. Now I'm seeing this. Oh, man. I'm seeing this guy. And he's like losing bones as he goes. Yeah, sorry, man. Whoa. Does he have extra bones to spare? No, I don't think he does. Let's let's make sure. There we go. Okay. Oh, that was, that's fun. I like this little guy. I'll keep adding some blocks. These are all examples, despite what the episode title is, of slow cyanotypes. Shadow, shade cyanotypes would be a better word for this. They're not made in direct sunlight, though I am finally starting to cast a, some sort of shadow. It's still 
very diffused light that's just bouncing around and then coming into the window. It's not a ray of sunshine coming in. Let me widen this out and you'll see. So right up here, we have our cyanotype on the windowsill. Still not direct sunlight. There is direct sunlight outside, but it's not quite to the windowsill. So we'll see it shortly. We'll turn this cyanotype now. And I am so happy to see there are people here and welcome. I hope things are going well for everyone here. I think I should go get something for the sheet of paper, like a, a natural object. And I bet outside is a good place to find a natural object. Na nature always resides outside. Okay, we have a friend that I just found outside. This is about a week ago, maybe two weeks, I found this, one of these little, I call them firework flower plants. I looked up their scientific name once, but I do not remember it today. It's kind of a, shoots off little, little things. So let's put this on a piece of cyanotype paper. Let's actually, let's put this here. Let's fold this. And then let's fold it again because we can. All right. And let's put our new friend on here. He's gonna leave a few things as he goes because he's been waiting out there in the, in the garden for his time to shine. And now we put him there. And I'm actually looking at this and reassessing. Let's turn it this way. You want kind of the most surface area in contact with your cyanotype photograms. That just gives you a sharper, sharper image. The more that are in, in contact, the more objects that are directly contacting your cyanotype, the more sharp points of focus you will have on your final image. The human eye likes a sharp line contrast between blue and white. You know, it's, it's pleasing to see a, a strong contrasted image because you don't have to figure out what it is. It's, what is that? I don't know, but it was harder to figure out. <laughs> Binoculars are going so good, we don't need to change them at all. Let us, that doesn't need to be there. Should we add cinnamon? Let's add the cinnamon, because this guy might be a little clumsy. There we go. Cool. Cinnamon on the cyanotype, not on that one. That one's all good. And let's put another one down, because we have so much space. Let us just use it. That can go right there. And let's not put too much thought into this one because that will just stop us. I do like order, or at least the semblance of it is welcome in cyanotypes because little patterns are nice for the, the this is my theory, I, this is not backed up by anything. Little patterns are nice for the eye. To give the human something to, to click with and say, oh, yeah, yeah, this thing happens. I've seen that before. This isn't so scary to me. This is all my theory, completely unscientific. So none of these cyanotypes are probably going to get much direct sunlight. That's okay. We don't need them to.
<laughs> Another rib cage hiding. Crazy town. Let's put a couple of these here. We put these in here way after we put the binoculars in there. So these will never be, well, can't say for sure. These will be getting a little more exposure, even though they're not going to get all the exposure compared to the stuff underneath this. The binoculars just have parts that have never, ever seen even this indirect sunlight coming in through the window. These, they've seen it. Look at that. We barely even left a mark on this yet. That's okay. We don't, we don't need to leave a mark on everything we do yet. Cyanotypes are for fun. That looks good. Our clumsy skeleton looks good. What do we have here? We got this cyanotype that has been washing in this water. It is yellow because it is all the developer, all the unexposed cyanotype material that didn't get developed by the sunlight just has washed away and now floats around in there. I tried to use this once as re-cyanotyping things, you know, taking a new sheet of paper and dumping it in here. Did not, it did not coat the paper because this is too diluted. It's just not going to do much. So we're going to dump this out. Well, no, we're not going to dump this out. We're going to reuse this water shortly. I am going to remove this cyanotype. There we go. Put it on this lovely screen. Just the standard window screen. Let's see if anything shows up on the back. Almost nothing. That's OK. All right, that just gets to hang out and develop. And let's take a look at this cyanotype because good things happen while we were waiting. This cyanotype looks like I bumped all of the uh, tiles, but I did not. This is the sharp shadow that comes from the indirect lighting in general at the angle it was coming in. Trying to match it, but I can't quite get it quite right. That's pretty close. So yeah. Looks like I threw the cinnamon at the same angle the sun was coming in. Do we do anything to this at this point? Not really a place for it. Hmm. I have not tried to stream on Twitch in answer to a question on this chat. It was my understanding Twitch was mostly video games and, and media of that sort. And that is good to know. Thank you. I will look forward to finding new ways to stream content so that it is useful. You could be a chat bot for all I know, but no, no, you're not. Cause I can see that <laughs> you've written something about paper and what we were talking about. So my apologies. I think that is very good advice and I look forward to learning about Twitch. Do we do anything else to this cyanotype? Yep, we do. Take this out, put this here, put that there, take this out. We're just creating new contrasts where otherwise there would be nothing or otherwise there would be solid color. And we can reintegrate these guys doing whatever we'd like. I 
There we are. And then we'll put this on top of the binoculars for now. I like how unstable that is. That'll be that'll be interesting. These are coming along well. This is coming along very well. Let's see what happens if we take the flash out. Okay, so now this is about an hour's worth of exposure, maybe a half hour. And it was just sitting there in the windowsill, no direct sunlight yet. And it's definitely left a shadow of very specific things. So that's pretty neat. Let's build up. Let's leave this. Now let's expose the frame, the back. What do we do with this? Let's do this. Just keep covering this up, actually. There we go. That was pretty easy. Leave that. And then, you know what? We ran out of space so fast. I'm not that surprised, but I'll just have to give up my seating. That's okay. Okay, there's plenty of sunshade to go. Oh, wow. But what do we put on here? I don't know, but let's put it in the shade for now. While we, uh, I guess we put blocks on it. Let's do it. We got plenty of blocks. Oh, we moved this one. So let's move it more. Uh, be right there. There we go. That was easy. Uh, so we move that, which means now we move this. Be right there. What we did, what we did here, we do here. All right, let's put this right here in the sun again. We're doing really good stuff, but let's make sure it really does its job well. I like this, it'll be a bunch of different random shapes. Yeah, this is a, an Instamatic camera, which is a format that had some success because it's, it's just a cartridge. You just drop right into the camera. You don't even have to thread it like a roll of film or anything. There's nothing. There's nothing but successful film loading and no further thought. But no format lasts forever. And since this was not a format of standardization uh, or standard as 35 millimeter, it did not continue to serve as a useful camera for others because the film is no longer gettable. But it does make a fine cyanotype. I keep keeping that circle around. Because circles just, circles are fine. But circles are kind of a lie. I don't, I don't know. They, they say they have an infinite number of sides. I don't know. Whatever you say, circle. Uh, I'm referencing a book called Flatlanders, where circles are, are kind of the ultimate in nobility, because in this world, the, the, the real cool thing is to have as many angles as possible. Everyone is basically a two-dimensional shape in Flatlanders. And the more sides you have, the more educated you are. So circles are circles are rarefied indeed. In fact, I'm not even sure that word is right. Circles are neato in the world of Flatlanders. What have we got here? Okay, we've added some beautiful blocks to a beautiful cyanotype. Not much more we need to do to that. Except cinnamonize it. Uh, just... Oh, you know what? On the frame side, actually, not not the other side. Yeah, this will be nice. I really shouldn't get cinnamon in this camera, but I'm not using it as a camera. Literally, I don't have film for it anymore. And it's, it's not really worth reloading it. We have space for more cyanotypes. And we certainly have enough paper. And this is our pre-cyanotyping 
shade cyanotyping show. Soon, the show will segue into quick cyanotypes because we will be getting sunlight coming right over this horizon. It will be very nice. And it's nice to meet you, Marco's son. Thank you for these awesome questions, and I hope my answers were somewhat helpful. Helpful. I think everyone learns well from everyone when the internet is kind to each other. So why do we keep putting all these shapes onto this paper? These shapes are a nice repeatable stacking pattern. So I can use them and create symmetries, and then I can use those symmetries and create the opposite of a symmetry, which is an asymmetry. So for example, right now, I'm trying to create kind of a mirror image of these particular shapes. And I want them to be spaced out reasonably. So now I use this little rhombus shape and I get them all spaced out. And now we'll put this here and that. And I don't think I answered a question I may have posed, which is why do we use these shapes? These shapes are so repeatable and this pattern helps me create these symmetries. And these symmetries are gonna define what the image is and how much uh, we like it. So I use the shapes because there's a lot of different patterns that I can make just using these same three or four shapes again and again. And actually the triangle would be the most versatile of these shapes just because it's the fewest number of sides that actually comprise a shape and it's used to build all of these shapes roughly. At least the shapes we're using. So let's build another hexagon out of triangles. And let's find a place to put it that kind of lines up. Let's say this, and then we move this up, up. <laughs> now we are happy with placement because it's, it's in a good arbitrary space. That's why we're happy with it. Does anything go down here? Nope. Okay. Our cyanotype is starting to get direct sunlight. Let's see what it looks like right now. I'm gonna remove this cyanotype. It's been maybe five minutes, maybe 10. Doesn't really matter. Cool. And you know what I realized? We're not gonna re-expose this on the same sheet. I'm going to turn it over and do this. And now we're gonna expose this side in direct sunlight. They'll be right on the other side of each other. That'll be so sweet. So it's getting direct sunlight right now in this little band, and that's gonna wash across it over the next duration of time. Let's move this. That's good for now. We can just keep kind of rearranging these. In fact, this can be, oh, I shifted this. Look at that, now I have changed this dramatically. So now it's time to reassess this image. What do we need to rebuild and what do we need to jettison? I'm gonna recenter this because I like the shape being kind of core to the concept. Yeah. And that's good. And then I think those are fine. Yeah, this wasn't nearly as big of a deal as I thought. Good. Let all our big deals turn out to be nothing. Let's put this here. And I'm going 
gonna put this just right there for fun. And that goes there. Cool. Where does this live? I guess it lives back on Binocularville. No, it can live it can live right here for now. You gotta set up your towns quick, you know. Binocularville is right there. These are competing amorphous shape town. We got camera frameville, skeleton stair, stair central station, um, block holding depot. I'm going to get some water. I would offer everyone some water. In fact, I am offering you some water. Please take a moment and get some water. No matter where you are, I bet that's a good idea. We got some real happy shade cyanotypes going right now. And I don't know if you can hear the happy hummingbird outside, but he is saying what a nice day it is too. That is the sound of a happy hummingbird perched outside this tree, this tree outside the window. We got new building blocks. What are we going to do with them? Well, I guess nothing yet. No, no, let's do something with them. We can do, let's see, what would this do? I think I can duplicate this. Okay. I need to make this thing happen here, if I am to keep the symmetry between these two cyanotypes like I set out to, because I want this one to be a small version of what this is. So I'm going to make this like that. Yeah, that looks good. That's why I like these Kapla blocks. You can use them to build different, different things, including larger versions of itself. Bonk. Sorry for getting my head all up in there. Yeah. Awesome. Not quite though. Hold on. There we go. Our uh, second side of the cyanotype is coming along well. That was almost a tongue twister, gracious. How do our binoculars look? Is a question maybe you were asking. I'm gonna ask it for us. First of all, let's see, we added these shapes after, but there's really nothing there. I don't see much difference. Let's see what difference is under one side of the binoculars. Oh, that's a different color for sure. Oof, yeah. 
Look, that's a totally different color. All right, let's set it back down. Should still be fine the way it was and we don't need to change anything. Let's see about, let's look at this. Move it around a little. Yeah, we are blocking our binoculars, but that's okay. Every time we move one of these, we give another one a chance for different light. So that's fun. And by having no particular plan, we ensure that no matter what we do, it is the right thing at that moment. I mean, can you look at this? Do you see a plan? If so, I might change that. But since there isn't a plan, I think that's fine. The little break up here, it kind of looks like two shrimp or maybe a shrimp kind of curling around on itself. I'm gonna take a few of these blocks out. And I'm gonna replace them where they could have been in between the other blocks that we just took away. And in so doing, we're gonna cover up the shadow these blocks cast and fill in the empty space that they were occluding, which was keeping you know, no light from getting to this page. And now the light will get here. So that's good. We're creating new interesting visuals that could not have happened unless we had a hand in them. And that's what I wanna do with cyanotypes. I wanna, I wanna make these images that are just, they couldn't have been one moment. If it was one moment, we would have used the photo, uh, a camera. But one moment is now stretched, you know, over an hour, two hours. Sometimes these take three hours to build in the shade. And that's a really long time to build up an image that is just coming together from things you're putting on a piece of paper. You know, I don't know when we coated this cyanotype page, which you can't really see, but it's it's coating well, or it's it's cyanotype, cyanotyping well. I didn't know it was going to go on that, but I wanted to make sure whatever was was going to be perfectly suited, you know, and ready to be absorbing all the photons that it was going to take in. So we, we coated that paper really well. We do everything very well to the best of our ability because we never know who's going to be using it especially if it's not us that's using it. Wouldn't we want someone else to experience the best cyanotype paper if we gave some of it away? Here you go. Try to have fun with this new thing. The cyanotype paper is garbage. That would not be very fun. So I wanna make sure if I ever do a bunch of cyanotypes and I'm out in the world that I'm giving away useful paper, like all of this paper, I would happily give away. And then I would you know, maybe wrap it in another piece of paper and say, Put this in the shade until you're ready to use it and then go have fun by putting it in the sun. And that was almost a rhyme all the time, but I stumbled somewhere along the way. Oh, well, look at that. This pattern built itself. I just moved all these down. Now there's all these different shapes that we get to see. Do we do anything with that? Nah. Let's take a look at this guy. So, this is our cyanotype that got direct sunlight. Let's look at this shadow. All right. It's pretty sharp. I see a lot of good strong lines. Let's open it up and see the other side, the shade one. Okay, they look pretty different from each other. In fact, I wouldn't even know one of these was... Well, it doesn't matter what it looks like yet. We'll see in the end what it looks like when we develop it. So I guess the question is now, what do we do with this side? I guess we do the same thing. Let's put this guy right back on this paper. Fold it back over. Ah, sorry, skelly friend. He lost his head. There we go. Now we'll put it back in the window and have your best day. Hey, it's doing something cool. That was too cool, paper. Here, be a little less cool. 
There we go. It was kind of rising up on its own, and that was making it hard to use as a cyanotype because it wasn't going to stay in one place long enough to cast a solid shadow. Problem solved. We are already starting to get some light onto our cyanotypes here. We haven't moved them from their place. They're already doing some cool direct light stuff. I love that. That's like bonus free light. I absolutely see a turtle. Yes. And I see, you know, especially underwater scenes when I look at these, because so many of these, when they're finished, they're blue and with little white specks. So in my head, blue and white, that's the ocean with bubbles. And so, yeah, this, this could be a turtle. Let's see. Let's throw this guy somewhere. Here, I'm going to put him down here. This is good light space. There we go. Let's align that light. Neato. So what have we done here? I've just made sure that there's a nice patch of light that's going to be crossing over this cyanotype, kind of like we have a, a, a scanner, or like a Xerox machine that's just like slowly scanning it. We're using a single long ray of sunlight, and it's going to gradually move across the image. And while we do this, we'll just move parts of this around. So the image will be built up over time through our efforts, but partly through automatic exposure from the sun's moving or the sun and the earth moving together. More cinnamon is being poured. And I'm pouring cinnamon onto that because it's gonna leave beautiful little white specks everywhere. And that's going to lend kind of an otherworldly quality to our, our final cyanotype. Okay. Should we add some cinnamon to this? Let's do it. Let's, I like to sometimes layer the cinnamon heavily onto the, either the top or the bottom, just to kind of give it some sense of, I can't even describe what. We'll find out. Cinnamon is a cyanotypist's friend. Oh, and now it smells like cinnamon in here, which is a very nice thing. Cinnamon is a calming scent. Another pentagon, hex hexagon, would go very well here but we left it empty so that we wouldn't be perfectly symmetrical. I have many friends that strive for symmetries. And I know that my creating asymmetries may not be the happiest part in their day, but I bet it's not the worst part. Let's see. Let's turn this guy around. See, he was in the sun for maybe only a few minutes. And you can see it's already been pretty well exposed. That was me kicking off some of the, the debris. All right, let's put this guy again. Take it like this, go like that. <laughs> okay, sorry. Gravity. There we are. And now we're gonna weigh him down again, this little piece of paper anyway. Here we go. Get him on the other side too. But just to keep the paper from flipping up, it's fine the way it is. And he will probably be our first cyanotype that we developed today because he, this cyanotype, I'm not gonna keep genderifying them, this cyanotype, is one of our first quick cyanotypes, one of the ones made in, in direct sunlight. And now that we have a whole window full, we can do lots of quick cyanotypes.
quick in cyanotype terms is maybe 60 seconds to two minutes. You know, some cyanotypes in, in shade can take two hours, three hours, four. Let's take one of these triangles away now that there's some sunlight hitting it. This guy. And let's put him over here. Yeah. Now we got a, a slight symmetry going on. I'm going to move this paper down so it's interacting with the sun in a similar way to our other one. And then I'm going to go like this. And that's going to mean I'm going to do this. Cool. I like this. This is looking really neat. Wait, is that, did I do the right thing to match? No, not quite, that's too far. There we go. Maybe, no, no, not quite. Like that. Sorry, I'm trying to match this and that, and I think I'm getting it. And if you're just joining us, we are making cyanotypes in the shade and some of them in the sun. Cyanotypes are a form of photography that uses a light sensitive paper. So this is a light sensitive paper. And if I expose this, my hand, for example, to some sunlight for just a few seconds, it doesn't take long for cyanotype paper to work on a nice sunny day, we will actually chart, start to change the chemical composition of the paper, so it'll start to darken. This is exactly the way a photograph is made, an analog photograph. That happened in 15 seconds. We can still use this paper later. So those are cyanotypes, light sensitive images that document whatever was happening to cast a shadow on them. I think these are done. Let's develop them. Let's take a look at this cyanotype. We had some fun making it. You can see it's kind of translucent. You can kind of see my hand through it. All right, let's put it in the water. Okay, you're good for now. This is cyanotype developer that I've used once. It's got some pre-yellowed water because that's what we did. You know, we washed the cyanotype and it left some yellow developer in there. I'm gonna develop this right in there to keep reusing our water efficiently. So that is a cyanotype of a natural object. I would love to know the name of this. If anyone happens to be able to look at dead plants and say, oh, it was a, the, 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 then I would love to know what this is called. It was originally green wherever you see light yellow. Okay, that can keep developing. It'll get a little darker, a little bluer. Our other cyanotypes are looking good. They've got this nice laser light going across them all here. Let's take another triangle off. And let's put it over here.
Oh, well, we got this guy. Let's put him back. Agitate this a little in a good way. And then we'll get him back in the sun like he wants to be. I don't remember which way he was going, so we'll just set him up in a new direction. I keep saying him. I mean this little, this type. Let's call him a type. He's a, it's a type. There we go. Ah, yes. I know what cyanotype to make next. I've got a bottle that was given to me because it'll make a really cool shadow. There's these little, these little monkeys on it. So let's use this bottle. Let's actually put it in a box. Here we go. We can do this right here on our cyanotypes. They're robust. Okay. Cyanotype paper goes here. Bottle goes there. Now it's all cradled. Excellent. And now we leave it in a swath of light and it can take this one. Let's remove this now. And that means we get to remove these two and adjust it in a similar capacity. Okay, looking good. Stellar. Scoot you up. Yeah, they're looking so happy together, all these cyano kids. Okay. That can go there. We're making a great mess. It may not appear that way. It looks like a lot of good zones, but everywhere just out of camera is a nice mess. It's, it's really nice. It tells me that we're having fun. It's safe fun. I have a, I have a path through the fun. Look at our cyanotype again now that it's been fully developed. I would say fully developed, but I might speak a little bit prematurely. Let's see. Now yeah, this looks good. All right. So I can now take this out of the water. Let it drip dry. And then we will put it over here on our, our drying screen again. And here's our first finished cyanotype of the day that we made all together. And I am very glad to have had your company for it because I will always look at this cyanotype and remember, oh yeah, Marco's son was like, hey, go look for something natural outside. And maybe I'm interpreting your comment a little loosely, Marco's son, but I interpreted it that way and I thought that was a good idea. So I'll always look at this and remember the fun that everyone had coming up with it. And it'll just be lying over here for now drying. This water is what we're gonna keep using for developing. But right now, none of our cyanotypes need developing. So we get to leave them the way they are. Maybe put this one back over in the sun. There we go. Cool. Uh, let's let's keep moving things. I like it when this becomes convoluted, where you just can't tell what it was 
originally a cyanotype of. So we've got several cyanotypes going. The ones I'm interested in right now are our, our micro and our macrocosm, which is this one, which uses big hexagon shapes. This one, which uses little hexagon shapes. But if you'll notice, they're both relatively identically configured. And I'll show you after I move this cyanotype out of the way. They both have a similar configuration. So, they should make a pretty interesting final cyanotype. And that's all I have to say about that. All these are looking really good. Let's see. Let's change this up a little bit. We have our... Okay, let's just do this. We don't need to be fancy. Let's look at our cyanotype here. What more do we do to this before it is done? I think we add a few more shapes just for dynamic interest. Keep the camera on here. And then maybe at the end we'll find some interesting texture to maybe put over it like grid. That would be kind of cool. I think we've thrown enough cinnamon on things for now. I'm trying to start positioning things closer to this side because I know the sun is going to start coming in this way. It won't get all the way over here, but it's going to start going that way. And I know that because I have an app called Sun Seeker that I can use. Sun, like, you know, the thing in the sky. Seeker is in, you know, the guy in Quidditch that's looking for the golden snitch. And that's Sun Seeker. You can use that to tell at any time of day where the sun will be. It'll even show you on a map, like, here's your home. Sun comes in at 9 a.m. here, and it shows you throughout the day. It comes in this way. So I know that from roughly 2 p.m. until like 6 or 7 p.m., I have a really nice set of sunlight runways here to work with. Sunrise, sunway, runways. And I am so glad for everyone that has said yes to being here for Cyano Sundays. That's not a thing until it becomes one. But I advocate cyanotypes for anyone that wants something to do because you can do anything with a cyanotype. If, if you have eyeballs and hands, you can start making really cool things. Just because it's really intuitive, you just start, you start playing. Look at this, we're, we're not, at no point did we use tools. We use toys for everything, except for this. I call the camera a tool. But everything we've used today is a toy and we're using it in a new way to play. So that's what Santa types are good for. We're helping you to look around and start seeing what you can recontextualize. What looks like fun? If it's this, I hope you continue to make cyanotypes and enjoy it. I'm gonna move this into some sunlight here. There we go. There you go. Cyanotypes are coming along well here. And we're not even gonna be done with these when the final batch of sunlight is washed over them because we're then gonna start building them up a little more, giving them some dimensionality. We're just adding our first 
base coat of strong blue and white sections to work with. Maybe some, some middle blue sections as well. And this bottle looks so cool in here. I can't change anything about it without changing the reflections dramatically, but it looks really good. I think it's going to be a nice cyanotype. What's this looking like? Let's take a look. We haven't really done much at all with this wide here. With this, let's investigate. Yoink. Oh, I see two shadows there. I don't know if that's coming through. Looks like this block got shifted at some point, so we'll leave that. Same for this one. Well, this is doing great. Doesn't need our help. What about this? How are you? Good, 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 good. I am glad. Let's move this. Let's do that. And you're done there. So at any point now, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cyanotypes cooking. Nine, if you count uh, the one binoculars I put down here in the, the special area for, for cyanotypes that need extra shade for the moment. I really like what's happening here with our, our camera. Specifically because I know the light is going to start raking, just raking across r-a-k-e like leaves and taking light and putting it on the little crevices of the blocks and that is such a neat thing to see in a final cyanotype because they're all these kind of they're they're not they're not light you normally see it's kind of otherworldly but we'll see maybe none of this will look at all like i'm describing and i'm totally overselling it that's pretty likely actually but I'm having fun overselling it. So thank you for being here for this process. And I've been told that Twitch might be a place that would enjoy some quality content of a cyanotype nature. And I would look forward to seeing how that works out. Because really, you've got to go where people are if you're going to be seen. I was watching a video gamer stream a Legend of Zelda with something called a randomizer on, on Twitch yesterday. That was very unique. It was a video game I knew, but it was with a whole new set of consequences for different dungeons. Okay. These ones are, they look like it's really too bright, but that's just because it's strong sunlight coming in. Everywhere else is doing very well and it's shade here. That's good. Don't need to change a thing. Let's adjust that. And let's take, okay, it's, it's time. Let's take all these off. Okay. So now we took all these shapes off, took this off. I'm gonna shake the cinnamon off too. I'm gonna sh shake this cinnamon off onto these two. 
That seems like an equal amount of cinnamon on both. Cool. And then same for this. I'm just going to kind of go in. That's how we reuse our cinnamon here. Here's our cyanotype before we've developed it. We're going to add to this. We're going to we're going to do stuff with this in the middle. It's going to be neat looking. Maybe we'll keep these covered with another block to make sure they show up in the final cyanotype. So let's put this back there. Let's put this here. Let's take that stays. There we go. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna put it here. Yeah, right there. And this goes there. Well, that was almost too easy. Let's put some of these in here too. Yoink. There we go. Okay. Now let's just put this right here and absorb some sunlight. Sorry, whenever you have to see my head up close, that's not by design, that's just the camera being very good at documenting everything underneath it. Okay, it's been, we just put this cyanotype with its unexposed section in the, sh in the sun. You can see, we see its shadow under there, not quite. We close this. So let's see, that was 30 seconds of sun exposure on this new center section. Do you see any difference? I would say we do. We're well on our way to making, where there was only a hexagon, we're well on our way to making a cube. So let's just keep covering up different parts of that hexagon to our liking. I'm gonna keep covering this section up for now. It's not gonna be a perfect hexagon. In fact, I'm gonna make it a little less perfect right now. Boop. And then we're going to go like that. Oh, yeah, we made it way less perfect. But that's actually going to be problematic if we open it. So let's make it a little more useful. There we go. Yeah, don't, don't give yourself a hard time just in the sake of spontaneity and randomness. just a couple minutes we're going to have a few cyanotypes ready to develop we'll dunk them in some water and we'll see what comes out and that's kind of the best part because that's when we get to see all our hard work show up as actual something we can share with the world you know what let's use another pentagon here or hexagon sorry take this one i'm gonna go like this and i'm gonna do this there we go This one uh, is looking pretty darn good. I'm happy with these pentagon hexagon shapes. I say pentagon hexagon, it is a hexagon because it is 
has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I know a pentagon has five sides. And I know other sides like septagon have seven and then octagon has eight and then nonagon has nine. So by process of elimination, I know this is a hexagon. And I'm not sure how many of those words were Latin and how many of them were English. It's a fine line between the two. And now we'll move this into the shade just to take a look at it. We got a nice gradation there. Let's add something to it. How about a complexity on this side? There we go. Turning this around so that it kind of uses its natural curvature for the benefit of us. I think, yeah, yeah, cinnamon is necessary. You're the, the, my intuition is right. I was going to say you're right, chat room, but I think maybe I'm just feeding on the energy of everyone saying, yeah, cinnamon, because it's fun. It really adds dimension where there previously would have been nothing. And I covered it up so that I would only get part of it covered in cinnamon. I'm not a barbarian. And you can really do a lot with just a few shapes. This in particular, this hexagon shape is really useful for doing these cyanotypes with because when you combine them, you can make these, these shapes that look kind of like cubes, the, the volumetric cube. And that's kind of neat. building a separate one inside here, which is pretty cool. Let's do this. This has been such a lovely fair weather day. I'm hoping likewise where you are. There's a lot of places to be on this planet. Heck, if if the International Space Station gets YouTube access, there's a lot of places to be off this planet and seeing this content. Technically, if you had a good enough telescope, you could see this content if you were on the space station. That'd be a real good telescope. Keeping those the way they are, because they look fine. Let's see what's under here. Stuff. Let's cover up some of this for fun. So these are all cyanotypes that started out as sheets of white paper and in a sketchbook. And I brushed on the cyanotype chemistry, just like you would brush on, you know, paint. And then I let the pages dry for about a half an hour. And then they're ready to use. And they look like this. I don't want to leave them in the sun too long. And I don't feel like changing the camera angle. 
But that's what a cyanotype sheet looks like before it gets exposed. And then gradually it turns from that yellow color to a darker color. And that's about, that's about where we are right now. We're in the process of that. And I'm doing my best to make sure that one side of this cubed area always has some cover just so that it looks, you know, there'll always be a nice bright side to our finished cube. It's good to have a white spot, a strong white spot somewhere in your cyanotype. Let's develop these. They are so happy and ready, I think. All right, we're gonna make it really easy and I'm gonna darken it in the environment so that we can actually see what happens? So this is our cyanotype that we made. Uh, let me dump this out. It's our cyanotype that we made using a couple shapes. This shape. There we go. And it's not done yet. I mean, it's done, but we haven't developed it yet. And it was all just this shape a couple different ways and a rhombus a couple different ways. And cinnamon, let's remember cinnamon. Okay, now we're gonna develop it by dunking it in the water that we used once before earlier. I'll bring it up here so you can see it a little better. see that part that we never took the, the cardboard away from. That's the white. That's the lightest, brightest part of our image. It's just, it's like the land exposure forgot right there, right there, right there. And in the final image, that'll be our reference point. That'll be when we look for, okay, but what's white? That'll be what we look at. and our expectations will inform what we see. And that's probably universally applicable. This is our third cyanotype developed with this water. It's very good to keep reusing your developer water. It's a good practice. It really gets you in the habit of saving your resources because, well, it's a resource, which means it's not unlimited. So let's treat our water well and let's use it again and again for cyanotyping. Let that develop. Let's open this back up. How many cyanotypes do we have? Let's move these pieces. We've made a mess and that's okay. We know what we're doing, we're professionals. Professional mess makers here. Okay. So when we leave these sheets in the water, it's because they're continuing to develop. I'm just gonna let this stay here in the water and more chemistry is gonna react with the water and start to come out of the paper. And that way it won't be a problem later when this is drying all the chemicals will be out of the paper and we'll just have an image. If we don't fully get all the chemicals out of the paper and we let it dry, though the chemistry will be trapped in the paper, but it'll still be exposable to light. So we'll look at a nice cyanotype and hold it out to the sun and you'll start to notice it darkening and then it changes the image and you don't have a nice image at that point. So, but we can leave our cyanotypes in developer water for five, 10 minutes at a time and 
they won't see any ill effects. They will be fine. And it's a good practice to do so because it saves the resource of water. All right, let's see. These are all happy. We're getting some nice direct sunlight on the skeleton guy here, which is pretty cool. We're also getting amazing great direct sunlight on this. Oh, I moved it, whoops. Let's see what I can do to put that back where it was. That's close enough. Let's throw this block off. Oh, there we go. Put it over here and then that one over there. Thank you everybody for being here. I am just delighted that I can have anyone joining me on this process without them needing to come visit me in real life, which is inconvenient for both of us, or anyone needing to, to actively, you know, watch over my shoulder. Both of those would change this process dramatically. I'm so glad that you can be here instantly at your discretion as soon as something interesting is happening. And then as soon as it's not interesting, I'm glad that you can choose to leave. I'll never know. It won't hurt my feelings. I'm glad to have spent time. What do we have here? This box lid is going to leave a nice shadow on this cyanotype. I like that. It's going to be a good one. Should we move these around? Yeah, let's do it. Bonk. We're just making a random pattern all the way around this border because I sensitized some of this paper, but not other parts. The parts that are white never got any cyanotype sensitizer. So we just, doesn't matter what happens to them. Nothing will, nothing will change for them no matter what we do. So that's kind of nice. But I want lots of different levels of visual interest for this. So I keep changing the blocks around. Okay, bye. See how this one's finishing up in the in the water here. Looking good. Looking real nice. Okay. This water is finally starting to turn a color. That's a good sign. That means these chemistries are actually getting developed into blue. We're not leaving them yellow. Yellow would mean they never got developed and blue means they got developed and then they washed off. That's what I would prefer. And we're just putting these on a piece of a, a window screen that I was able to take off my windows because I have enough screens and I can spare one for now. All right, let's look at our cyanotype here. So here's our cyanotype that we just made. I think it looks very nice. You can see it was it was blocks and it was our cube. Here, let's see. Mm. There we go. And so you see, we kept that side covered the entire time. Never got any sunlight, so it never turned blue. And I would always keep one of the yellow blocks in the middle, which gave us a separate 
undeveloped area in the middle to give us kind of an inferred middle cube. And all these little subsections around it were fun as well. I'm glad we made this together. I'm gonna go spray it down with a little bit of extra water to make sure it's fully developed. I think we have room for a couple more cyanotypes to develop in this water. So let's let's be done with this first batch. No, this is this frame is nearly finished. Which one can we be done with? Here we go. Our corner kids. Okay. Let's take a look. All right. We were working on this earlier. I've already kind of jostled it. But we're gonna take the blocks off. And now I'm gonna dump this extra cinnamon onto this again, as has been our custom. That's just to reuse it so I don't have to go find a trash can every time. Now we got this image. Does this need anything else? Does it need anything? No, but it can benefit from something. Yeah, let's do more. Let's, we, have, we have the technology. We have, we have the, the hexagons. So let's cover up this right here. Yep, and let's take this and cover it up. Uh, let's see, like, just like that. Yeah. And is this good? Okay. Now we've added interest. This is just giving it a last little touch, finishing up a bit before it goes in. This will this will give it that fun depth we were talking about. And you know what? So will cinnamon. Gosh, why are we not cinnamoning this? Hey, we got some water on this. Neato. I think skeleton guy is gonna be so good. But you know what, I often think the best ones are not the best ones and vice versa. So who knows what these will be? Nobody knows. I know I can put a few more blocks here and it won't be a, a detriment. Man, cinnamon makes me hungry for so many good foods. Oatmeal is the only healthy one I can come up with. So I'm going to say that one. Mmm, delicious oatmeal with cinnamon. Yes, bird friend, I hear you. How's this going? Okay, so what do we do with that? Well, we block some of it and not other parts. So that's what that looks like. And why did we do that? I don't know yet. Not everything has to have a well thought out plan attached to it yet.
giving it a little kind of sun blast right now, just for fun. This is the section that I'm exposing. This was previously covered up cyanotype exposure. And uh, so it was not getting any sunlight. Now it is. And I'm giving it the best possible quality. Okay, I think it looks good. Let's dump the cinnamon out as is our custom. All right, develop it. I know that was unceremonious, but I wanna demonstrate just how easily these things can be done. You don't really need to take much care when you make a cyanotype, they'll take care of themselves. And they'll give you really interesting effects no matter what you do. In fact, the more you don't care, the more they take care of it for you. I love it. It's looking so good already. I'm seeing it going in there here. Let's give it a little help. We don't need to be so, so laissez-faire. Let's give it some help. There you go. I believe in you. Get another hexagon going, because we can. Well, these are done. Let's be done with them. In fact, let's dump this water out and give it a chance to really get fresh. Take a look at the cyanotype again that we just saw, but now look at it with the uh, benefit of clear, clear water. There we go. Now you can see all those beautiful little gradations, like all the different, different uniquenesses. Okay. Okay, time to develop two cyanotypes. Hmm. 
Hmm, where do we dump their salmon onto is the real question. I guess this right there. Yep, ruin that camera. That's okay. It's got character and it can afford it. So look at that. It's almost like we have a, one's a close-up of the other. Well, I don't want to do anything else to him but develop him. No, I do want to do something else to him. I lied. I am a total liar pants. I'm not doing anything to these right now. Let's develop this. We'll do more with that one in a moment. Camera. Let's develop our bottle. Probably gonna make another bottle cyanotype, and this time I'm gonna fill it up with liquid. Same exact thing, I'm just gonna take the bottle, put it in that box, uh, but I'm gonna put some, some liquid in there that's not fully transparent. So not water, and not oil, not like thick oil, but you know, maybe coffee. I'm gonna put some coffee in there. There we go. Put some, uh, let's put some different liquid in there. Hmm, it's casting a nice shadow that way too. Well, okay then, is that, is that at the same height? Let's see. No, not quite, okay. We've got a uh, rebrewed coffee. It's not quite, it's not dark, it's not light, but it will absorb some of the light and that'll make it a better exposure on a cyanotype. type. Should be sufficient. Let's set it back up. We got lots of light to use. In fact, we can even orient it differently this time. We can set this up however we want. Take it like this. And the screen that we're using to dry these prints on is a window screen. So I usually have those in my, my home's window to keep it from being too bug filled in my home. So today they are a print drying screen and they do that job very well. Okay, let's do it this way.
There it is. We're, we're done. Let's, let's expose it. Oh, well, we're blocking skeleton, but that's okay. He had enough exposure fun where he got that. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Thought I had a good place for it. I guess it'll be down here. Happy there. I think our skeleton's ready to be developed. Shall we see how he's going? This dorky skeleton is having his dorkiest day. I'm so glad we were here for it. I'm trying to find a way for us to see it without it being in the sun. It's not easy to do. Nope, oh, totally bonked the cyanotype bottle, which is clearly not where it's supposed to be then. If it's gonna get bonked, it's in the wrong spot. But I guess I can have all this runway now. Let's take that. Okay, we make messes all the time. And cleaning them up is part of the fun. But you know what? We don't clean up until it's time to be done. And it's not quite time to be done yet. Because we haven't developed all our cyanotypes. And even better, we have some things to add to two of our cyanotypes. So let's finish this little bit of basic cleanup so we can add the best parts to the main attraction cyanotypes. Our cube worlds. Love the cube worlds. It's okay, these are cinnamonized. That'll keep the bugs away. Unless they're bugs that like cinnamon, in which case it will do nothing but attract them. Good to have an orderly system. Bones and blocks go in this box.
we're adding our secondary exposures to these now. These being our uh, big cube cyanotypes. I'm going to duplicate what we did before. Right there. So I need another hexagon to stay stay accurate here. You know, like that. I don't even know. Let's do it anyway. Yeah. Okay. We are again duplicating our cyanotypes. Little version here, big version here. It looks like just random junk. It's more than random. It's ultra random. See how our skeleton descending a staircase is looking. Pretty good. He looks really out of sorts. Or maybe he's in sorts. I don't know. Maybe he's going up and he's doing great. He's like, yeah, I got this. I know what our next cyanotype will be. This is one of my favorite cyanotypes to make because we get to use the things I already ate for breakfast, meaning eggs, coffee, etc., and recontextualize them. And that will make sense in a moment. First, bring in the coffee. That's rebrewed coffee. And then I'll bring in the egg carton. All right, this is fully an endorsement of these eggs. Okay, where do we build this cyanotype? We'll build it down here. We'll move the water. And this will be our workspace, right where my foot is. Okay. There's our egg container. Okay. And let's do this. Gonna give it a little angle. And let's open it up. Sorry for that sound. Okay. I think it's going to be good like that. Cool. 
In an ideal world, none of the plastic will have micro perforations and it will hold. We'll find out. Let's change something over here. That can go, that can go, but it goes like this. And then I'm going to do this, and that'll be duplicated here, here ish. And then this can move up like that. Stupendous. Tempted to add cinnamon, because a little bit of cinnamon goes a long way, and I'm gonna. And I'm happier for that choice. We add cinnamon to cyanotypes because it is the darkest thing we can put on the paper that's not going to upset our allergies. I'm speaking as myself and my environment. People around me aren't usually too upset when I sprinkle cinnamon, but when I was using pepper, people around me started to tell me, don't use pepper. And that's reasonable because it's a very agitating thing to have pepper in your nose. Your nose. What do we do here? Let's... Yeah, that looks fine. Well, let's give it a little exposure. And same for this one. And now we'll move this one down halfway, which means we move this one down halfway. Move this guy. Had to move this box because it was slightly in the way. That's how it goes. So why are we doing all this? You will have to wait and see. I'm doing it because it's a lot of fun. That's my reason. My reason is not your reason. So I hope you find one. If this is for you. Okay, so we're, we're getting close to finishing up our cubes here. They're, they're not cubes at any point. They're always just hexagons with different facets at different levels of brightness. But they're cubes when they're done, if we look at them from a human perspective and try to see depth. Oh, okay, so you're done. Yeah, all that. Super. Super. Cube, 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 cube. Okay. So let's do one more cube, a little bit more cube work here. Trying to kind of duplicate 
what I'm doing on both sides of this so that I end up with a similar effect. Because one is supposed to be just like the other. This should be like this, and that should be like that when we're all done. This is done. It's okay to develop these in the sunlight. It'll help get that little extra undeveloped parts fully, fully out and in the sunlight, and then, then it'll live, live its best life. And do you know what I made? Because I don't, and that's okay by me. But I did jostle our egg crate cyanotype, so I guess it's time to develop this one. Looks like it leaked quite a bit. Lovely. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> Probably looks like we didn't even take the egg crate off. It looks like it's still there. That's the magic of a dark liquid with cyanotypes. It gives a lot of depth. And now everything smells like coffee. All right. So proof that the that is a flat image. <laughs> Forgot what we were doing, so let's take a look. All right. All right. And that's covered. Is that it? That's it. Gosh, you know what today needs for me? Uh, like a, a, a nice slurpy beverage. I think that is going to be the only thing I'm doing after this, is going to get a refreshing beverage. And oh my gosh, I am so happy to hear Marco's son, and I apologize for you just calling you Marco's son, but that's how I was introduced to you in this chat, so I'm going to keep using that nomenclature. I am so glad you're doing another stop motion animation, because I think it's like some of the most fun you can have is making stop motion animations. It's the ultimate in control over a film environment, that's for sure. Okay. We got two cyanotypes that look roughly similar. They look almost, you know, done. <laughs> you know, like, what more can we do to these? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. I love our cyanotypes today. These ones, these, this, this one is making me really happy. This is exactly what I was thinking I would get as a result of cutting out these shapes. I just wanted a bigger version of the, the pattern blocks, the yellow ones, you know? I was, oh, I'm so glad that 
this is the live stream and that you were here for me to have this moment and together we made it even better. Let's see what the little one looks like. Okay, so that's the full scale version. And this is the uh, close up version. Sure, let's do it side by side, see if we can tell. I got this. Okay. This is what we did. We made a close up and then a, a far away version. And we did this with our imagination. Like these exist not because we had a camera. These exist because we had fun. Let's see how our bottle's doing. Probably done. Here's our second uh, bottle cyanotype, just as a, as a test. This one certainly turned out differently. Boy, I don't know what I'd be looking at if I hadn't seen it made myself. Let's rinse these. They're almost finished. I'm gonna give them some clear water so we can really enjoy things. And let's take a look at the mess we've made. And you can enjoy the fact that you don't have to clean this mess up at all. And since we have time, let's make another cyanotype while I go clear this water. See, we put a lot of thought into this one already. And we're now I'm now I'm actively putting thought into it. Do we need cinnamon? Yeah, we need cinnamon. Okay, good cinnamoning. I'm gonna go change the water and bring us some fresh sanitizers. Fresh water.
Well, while this cyanotype is made, let's review the cyanotypes we made. I remember that one because we just developed it. Here's our bottle. I think that was the, the second, the more recent of the two cyanotypes of bottle we've made. Here's our skelly friend. Skeleton ascending a staircase or descending. I don't know, which way is he going? And who's to say it's a staircase? Only us. So I kind of beat the, beat the you-know-what out of this by stepping on it on accident. Sorry, cyanotype. Here's our second skeleton one. That was our helter skeleton one where we just threw stuff on there kind of willy-nilly. Then here's our egg crate that I swear is two-dimensional. <laughs> There's our bottle, the first attempt. I think it looks good. The monkeys came through. There's our second of the two macros images that we made. I like that one a lot. I see a lot of things in that. And then we got this guy. That was our uh, first, one of the first big cubes we made. You always remember your first big cubes. Okay, these are just gonna stay there and dry. We're gonna adjust a few little things on this cyanotype. Sound effects optional, always optional, but they do improve the fun. We put cinnamon on here because it makes everything smell good and it leaves a nice dark or light mark on the finished cyanotype. I agree, this is like auto painting. It does just seem to happen. It's just the, the sunlight does it. It's so fun. I'm just now reading the chat. So I'm catching up on all the nice things people have said. Auto painting, beautiful. Okay, what's under there? Underwear, that's a classic. Okay, looks good. Adjust. Adjust what? I don't have a joke for that. That's it.
we're using up the last of one of our cyanotype exposures that we forgot about, or I forgot about, the binoculars. So we left these out over somewhere over there, and now they're finishing up here. Should be interesting. In fact, let's just start it. Well, we'll, we'll wait, and we can look at it together. I am so going to get a Slurpee after this. Everyone is welcome to join me in spirit. However you feel a Slurpee is warranted in your life, a Slurpee can be substituted for any number of things that you like to do. I have one Slurpee a year, and today feels like a good day for it. Probably get Coca-Cola Slurpee. Those are really good. Stick with these shapes. Don't over complicate it. Oh, that's going to leave a beautiful little intermediary line on this. Thank you so much for spending a Sunday here. This has been such a treat. I love making cyanotypes with you. You showed up. You did something on a day, or you could have done anything, and I'm happy you did this. Oh, I don't know if you heard that, but that was the sign of one of the cyanotypes that fell off. It must have been dry enough.
That's the power of hexagons. So when you look at this, do you see a hexagon? Do you see rhombuses? Or maybe trapezoids? I see a, a triangle, I see a rhombus, I see another rhombus. There's a giant hexagon, there's a triangle again. Yeah, I see lots of great shapes in this. We made some really good cyanotypes today. Let's let's take some stock here, make sure we, we've accounted for most of them. Looks like it. There we go. We made some great cyanotypes today. And I'm going to do like some copying of these, maybe put them onto a different piece of cyanotype paper. We'll see how they look. I think this one might be my favorite in terms of a, a story being told. No, I, I'm not even sure which way I'm holding it. And I really like our, our, our micro and our macro. These ones, these ones turned out very nice and make me happy. Is, you know, this is, these are images that started out as thoughts and then they became real. Can't hold them up very well, sorry. That's okay. They're gonna dry and be happy and we'll review them at another time. And again, the joy of cyanotyping via live stream is that once this is done, it's done. You don't have to clean any of this mess up. As far as you're concerned, it's streams over and you're clear to go. So thank you for this Sunday. I look forward to seeing you again.